While Lord Haw Haw and his fellow travelers were betraying their countries over the airwaves from inside Nazi Germany, occupied France had its own radio superstar, broadcasting on behalf of the Third Reich. Nicknamed the French Goebbels, Philippe Henriot's mesmerizing rhetoric and delivery made him compulsory listening for friends and foes alike, and his career is a timely reminder of the dangers of state propaganda. Henriot's life between the wars didn't immediately suggest that he would become a Nazi collaborator. He was a poet and journalist. The driving force in his life was devotion to Roman Catholicism. Like many Catholics, Henriot felt deeply threatened by the rise of communism. His opposition to the far left led to him becoming politically active in the Republican Federation. The Federation was the largest conservative party during the French Third Republic, France's system of government from 1870 until the country's fall to the Nazis in 1940. The organization gathered together the so-called progressive Orleanists of the right, in opposing the more secular and centrist Democratic Alliance. Henriot was elected to the Third Republic's Chamber of Deputies for the Gironde Department, located in southwest France, in 1932 and 1936. As the Spanish Civil War polarized Europe, so Henriot drifted further right. In his speeches, his anti-communism sat alongside increasing hostility to Jews and Freemasons, Whilst this may have suggested that he was by now a fellow traveller of the Nazis, at the outbreak of war, he was fiercely anti-German. As Paris fell, the French government retreated to Vichy in southern France and signed an armistice with the Third Reich. The Vichy regime is often characterised as a puppet Nazi government. However, it was conceived as a pragmatic and expedient way for the French to retain some control over French society. Vichy was a devil's bargain. Two million French soldiers had been retained as forced labour by the Nazis and held over the head of the Vichy government. French police were forced to round up Jews and communists, many of whom perished. In return, Vichy was largely allowed to plough its own furrow, in its own zone, and in the French overseas colonies. They also managed to resist committing troops, or military support, to Axis operations. Henriot began working for the Vichy regime as a journalist, still focusing principally on defending Catholicism. Things changed when the Nazis invaded Soviet Russia, in Henriot's mind, the defeat of Bolshevism would once and for all secure Catholicism against the godless left. He swung squarely behind the Nazis. There's lots more to come in this video, but please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing to the channel. And please consider supporting my work with a PayPal donation. Thank you. Henriot's work for Vichy consisted of creating programs for and broadcasting on Radio Paris, which promoted the position of the government. He then took to broadcasting twice a day on Radio Vichy, instigating a propaganda campaign against the Free French Forces, the resistance within France, and anyone else that he saw as a threat. He also attempted to inspire Catholics in what he regarded as a life-or-death struggle against Bolshevism. His arguments that Nazi occupation wasn't so bad after all managed to find a receptive audience among some, leading him to receive that nickname, the French Goebbels. In 1942, Allied success in North Africa threatened the Vichy regime forcing the Nazis to extend their military occupation over southern France. Henriot continued to broadcast propaganda. Indeed, his profile and audience continued to grow. Huge and diverse groups of people, 
some of whom had little time for his opinions, listened in compulsively. At the time, he was probably France's biggest media star. His broadcasts even seemed to fire himself up. In 1943, despite being in his 50s, he joined the Malice, the Vichy government's paramilitary militia. As an iconic figure in Vichy circles, Henriot was always a prime target for the French resistance. Yet such an operation, in the heart of collaborationist France, would be a bold one. On the 28th of June 1944, Henriot opened his door to members of the Malice, except that they were in fact members of the Maquis, the Vichy-based arm of the French resistance, disguised in Malice uniforms. Henriot never stood a chance. What followed might seem odd to a modern audience. Henriot received a state funeral in Paris, presided over by the Archbishop of the city. Thousands attended, and filed past his coffin to pay respects. Paris was liberated less than two months later, and everyone that day must have known that it was only a matter of when, not if, the Allies would roll into the city. There's no doubt that many saw Henriot as a French patriot, doing what he could to preserve French culture and Catholicism. For others, just like today, fame and celebrity can have a mesmerizing effect on people, and there will always be professional mourners. What is more unsettling is the realization that in any era, skillful propaganda can blind most people to the moral bankruptcy of tyrants.